Would you please welcome Mr. Jeff Carey to the stage. I'm going to read a section from a book I'm working on right now. Um, it's called Estranged Union. This is kind of a like, rough copy of it. Okay, cool. Um, I am very proud to announce, though, that um, I have been gra graciously uh, sponsored for the nomination of the Pulitzer Prize wow. by our wonderful uh, Greater Flint Creative Alliance. Yay, Creative Alliance! I just wanted to thank them for that. That's just wonderful. Uh, All right. What's that? Make our name famous. Make our name famous. I hope to do that. <laughs> that would be wonderful, actually. Yeah. Um, it's been a lot of work, though. I'm currently working on 33 drawings that go in this book, also. So each of the each of the journal entries in this is accompanied with a drawing. Huh. So um, that's what I'm working on right now, trying to finish it so that once it's finished, I can submit to the Pulitzer Prize. And uh, I have to send four copies of this to them to be judged. So hmm. it's kind of interesting. Uh, is that available? Is that this isn't published yet? Okay. Yeah, this was just like a working copy that I made. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'm going to be reading a section from November 30th of 2010. All right. Um, I wrote this while I was working in the automotive industry, and it was during the collapse of the automotive industry. So I it was journaling that collapse as it happened. Um, so I feel this collection has some historical significance also uh, because it captured that time period. Um, Quinch Press, the name of it says it all. I am back at the Ford Sterling Axle Plant. They have me working the roof with Nick, a 37 year veteran of the automotive industry, a man proud that he has spent his whole life at Ford, a man who, despite his gray-white goatee, could pass for Robert De Niro. It is raining and the cold is numbing. We scuff along the tar and rock and standing water of the roof, but I am thinking of the quench press, the quench press where yesterday in a moment's misjudgment, a man lost his fingers. Ooh. This is the uh, haiku that accompanies that. His severed digit was lost in a vat of oil, claimed by the quench press. It's where they found his fingers. It was in a 55-gallon drum of oil. Uh, Nick says that Ford has the highest fatality rate in the industry. They're cracking down on safety especially with this latest incident, he says. What do you expect, though? We work in a factory. This kind of shit happens. It brought to mind my days at GM Flint Metal Center and the supervisor, Bob, who, with two missing fingers, and then it brought to mind their plant's urban legend. And this is the poem for that legend. It's called The Man Killer. There's a grim lore that haunts the plant about a drunkard's death on the C1 line. No one deserves it, they tell, but he was in the wrong place. 20,000 pounds can, well, change a man, respectfully, into whatever it deems fit. In this case, the hood of a Chevy. Flecks of bone, jellied flesh, and that gray matter, which had went momentarily unused, found itself tightly compressed in the dye. What drove him into that open mouth of solid steel, two finely tooled jaws engineered to shear and spit a million clones out the other end? Surely he had gone in a hundred times before, support bars resting on the column post, safety lock dangling from his jeans, tempting Newton and Murphy, pushing their buttons, provoking them to finally exercise their laws with a thunderous clap and a moment of silence. Operator Air, they tell, his memory stamped repeatedly into unionized nerves, for the man killer still shakes the floor. Wow. 